Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day, and Phil doesn't have anything for Alice. He intended to buy her something very nice, but... Well, let's go back two days. Alice and Phil are downtown shopping. Hey, Alice, let's go home. I'm tired of looking in shop windows and walking up... Oh, Phil, just look at that stunning two-piece French bathing suit. Well, I'll look, but I ain't gonna... Ooh, la, la. (laughs) like it? Viva la France and cherche my femme. <laughs> All right, take it easy, Father. Simmer down. I just wanted to know how you liked it. I think it's very seductive. <laughs> <laughs> then why don't you go in and buy it? Yeah, maybe I'll... Nah, I'll stick to my Hawaiian trunks. <laughs> Bill, I thought you might buy it for... Well, uh, uh... For who? Oh, I might as well tell you. Sunday is Mother's Day, and it would make a wonderful gift. Oh, don't be silly. My mother ain't the type for that. (laughs) Phil, I was suggesting that you buy it for me. You? Now, wait a minute. I wouldn't let my wife wear one of them things. Why not? Well, it's too scanty. You're... you're, Well, you're liable to catch cold. (laughs) I'm just thinking of your health, dear. You need something warmer. Well, then how about buying me that full-length mink coat we saw? That ought to keep me warm. That'd keep you too warm. (laughs) You'd only perspire and run a temperature. Hmm. There must be a healthy present he can buy me. Hey, Doc, how about a diamond bracelet? Honey, diamond bracelets, fur coats, take it easy. I don't have that kind of cabbage. Well... If you're a little short, I'll help you out. (laughs) I'll tell you what, Phil, I'll give you an advance on your allowance. (laughs) No, thank you. I have a stipend. (laughs) Now, let me see. I got 20, 40, 60... Seventy. Hey, Bud, could you spare five bucks for a guy who needs a curly? Hello, Frankie. Oh, hello, Alice. I didn't recognize you. Wait a minute, Remy. What's the idea of panhandling? Please, I am not panhandling. I happen to be soliciting financial aid for a worthy people. (laughs) Who? The INLGPNRs. Oh, the Anilkapers. Fine race of people. (laughs) Frankie, who on earth are the INLGPNRs? The Institute for Needy Left-Handed Guitar Players named Remley. (laughs) Oh, it's for you, huh? Alice, he's trying to raise money to pay his bookie. He owes him $134. 
Curly, you're maligning me. <laughs> Just trying to raise enough money to send my dear old mom a gift for Mother's Day. Oh, that's sweet, Frankie. What are you going to send her? A shawl, a knitting bag, or No, a... no, I have a sentimental custom. I send her money, a dollar for every year of her life. Oh, now, Frankie, that's a wonderful idea, and I'll lend you the money. How old is your mother? 134. <laughs> Plus interest. Ah, <laughs> uh, so it is your bookie. I was right the first time. Oh, Remley, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Forgetting your mother on Mother's Day. I didn't forget her. I already sent her something. Did you get something for Alice? No, but... Hmm. Well, I'm going to right now. Look, Alice, you run along, and I'm... You go on home, and I'm going to stay downtown, and I'm going to shop for your present. All right, honey. See you later. Okay. Hey, Remley. Hmm? She's a sweet hunk of stuff, boy. <laughs> sure wish I knew what to get her. Isn't there something she expressed a desire for? Yeah, yeah. She liked that mink coat in the window there, but it cost $3,000. Well, yeah, if you buy it in a swanky store like that, but not if you buy it wholesale. <laughs> well, where can I get it wholesale? <laughs> what did you say? I said, I don't know if I want you to answer this or not. <laughs> I said, where can I get it wholesale? I happen to know a guy. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm going to see you later. No, I'm... wait a minute. Come here, Curly. Look. I don't know this guy personally, but they say he's a reputable furrier. Uh -huh. His name is I.J. Grogan. <laughs> hey, at least look at his furs if you don't like him. You don't have to buy them. True. All right, I'll look. Come on, let's go. Hey, Remley. Hmm? Is Grogan's place in this ritzy neighborhood? Oh, yeah. It's just off this street. <laughs> Come on, Curly. We turn right in here. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. Hmm? <laughs> what are we going up this dark alley for? <laughs> well, the store is out of the high rent district. <laughs> See, it's along here someplace. Psst. Hey, Pat, you want to buy a fur coat? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here's Grogan's fur shop, hey, now. He has his fur shop right out here in the open. Yeah, no overhead. <laughs> uh, Mr. Grogan, we're here to look at some mink coats. Well, see, so you come to the right place. I got a couple hanging right here on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> now, here. Now, here's a beautiful pelt. I can let you have it for 500 I just feel this fur. Go ahead, stroke it. Okay. Hey, this feels nice and soft and... <laughs> Sounds like a good mink. <laughs> Cut it out, will you? It ain't no mink, it's a cat. In that case, I'll let you have it for two fifty. Wait a minute. Frankie, let's get out of here. I've seen this guy in a cowboy hat selling radios all the time. <laughs> I don't want to do no business up no alley. I want to go to a regular store. Well, now, why don't you say so? Follow me into my shop. Careful, now you watch your step, man. Nobody's ash cans here. That's it. <laughs> Now, if you just crawl in here through this window... Yeah. Ah, here we are. Here we are where? Yeah. Remley, how do you find these places? <laughs> I got contacts. <laughs> now, gents, you wanted to buy a good fur coat. Is that right? Yeah. I got one right here. Well, let me see it. Okay. Wait till I turn the lights out. <laughs> Oh, I've come to the right place now. <laughs> What's the idea of turning the lights on? It's for your own protection. This coat is so highly glazed, if I leave the lights on, it'll dazzle you. <laughs> now, just look at this fur. Look at it. A guy's got to be an owl to buy a coat in this joint. <laughs> Stop horsing around. Shall I wrap this coat up, or do you want to wear it? <laughs> I 
wouldn't buy a coat in this gyp joint. Come on, Frankie. Hey, I'm sorry, Grogan. I changed my mind. I ain't gonna buy my wife a fur. I'm gonna buy her a diamond bracelet. Diamond bracelet? You come to the right place. <laughs> hey, step right behind this crate. Into our jewelry department. Now, wait till I turn the lights on. Oh, this we get to see with the lights on. Of course. I ain't ashamed of my jewelry. <laughs> hey, just look at this piece here. Now, there's a bracelet any woman would be proud to own. Hey, Curly, this is a beautiful hunk of jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like the real thing. Yeah. Hey, Grog, how much you want for this? That's it. I can let you have it for as little as how much you got. <laughs> $200. So? You drive a hard bargain, bud. <laughs> All right, get the cash out while I wrap this up. Uh, would you like to have a gift wrapped? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'll use this beautiful paper here. And... No, I better wrap it in something else. This is today's racing form, and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> have you got the 200 have I got it? I got the money right here in my hand. But wait a minute. Before I hand it over, are you sure that this is genuine? Looks like good money to me. I mean, a break. <laughs> well, have it appraised. If they say it's worth less than $500, I'll give you your money back. Fair enough, eh? Yeah. Say, tell me, Grogan, if this is worth $500, how can you afford to sell it to me for $200? That's simple. I eliminate the metal man. Or any other man who happens to get in my way. <laughs> it's a pleasure to do business with someone like you. <laughs> what do you know? It's a five o'clock whistle already. <laughs> Time to go home. I'll, I'll just take that 200. Thanks. So long. Wait a minute, Grogan. I... Frankie, why is he going down that trap door? I guess he has an apartment under the store. <laughs> well, now that you got Alice's present, let's take it home and we'll see. All right, you mugs. Stay where you are and get your hands up. This is a law. Well, if it ain't Seymour subpoena in person. <laughs> yeah, old Nick Nightstick himself. <laughs> You're under arrest for receiving stolen goods. Hand over that bracelet. Beat it, will you, bud? You're cluttering up the aisle. Go pound a beat hey, something. Curly, done. curly, curly. You can't talk that way to a cop. Yeah, what are you talking about? He ain't no cop. It's a racket. Grogan sells you the stuff, and this guy sticks you up and takes it back. He works with Grogan. He's a confederate. <laughs> Curly, he can't be a confederate Why not? He's wearing a blue uniform <laughs> Well, Mr. Bones, we finished with that mess for a routine last week <laughs> Well, I just thought that I'd get a little yak in here while... <laughs> All right, pick and pat <laughs> Let's see how funny you can be down at the station house Station house? Hey, Rebel, did he say station house? Yeah, that must be the play. All right, come on, come on. I'm now, wait a minute. Wait. Come on. Miss Harris, we called you down to headquarters because we have a mug here who claims to be your husband. Turnkey's bringing him in now. Oh, he can't be my husband. Mr. Harris is downtown shopping. Oh, wait till I see this phony who's masquerading as my husband. I'll, I'll tell... Uh... Hello, honey. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> hey, Alice, I'm glad you're here. Now you can tell these guys who... Quiet, are... you. Mrs. Harris, is this man your husband? Before I answer that, can it be used against me? Honey, <laughs> will you please tell the man who I am? I want to get out... He is my husband. Oh, my mistake. His mistake, he says. <laughs> Phil, how did you get into this? Honey, I was buying you a Mother's Day present, and I didn't know the guy had stolen goods. Miss Harris, if you'll vouch for these men, I'll let them go in your custody. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> and now to show my appreciation, I'd like to do something for you. Here's a couple of tickets to my radio show. Oh, Mr. Harris, you're so good to me. <laughs> I'm on duty Sunday. I won't be able to go. Oh, what a shame. I'd hate to have you miss my song, Sarge. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll sing it for you right now. Curly, please, not in the police station. You'll get us arrested again. Quiet, Remley. <laughs> this one Alice does with me. Oh. Let's show him, honey. <laughs> 
But baby, stay. it's cold outside. I've got to go but away. But baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping that you drop so in. Very warm. I'll hold your hands there just My like I. My mother I will start to worry. You know what you're hurrying. And father will be pacing the floor. The fireplace roars. So really, I'd better be Beautiful, discouraged. please don't hurry. Well, maybe just a half a drink more. Put some records on while I. The neighbors may but think. But baby, it's bad. Out there. Hey, what's in no this drink? No camps to be had out there. I wish I knew your how. Your eyes are like starlight now. break the spell. I'll take your hat. Your hair looks I swell. I ought to say no, no, Mind no, if I move in At closer. least I'm gonna say that I tried. What's the sense of hurt? I really pride? can't Oh, stay. baby, don't hold out. Oh, baby, but it's, it's cold outside. outside. I simply must but go. But baby, it's cold outside. The answer is Ooh, no. It's cold outside. The welcome has How been. How lucky that you so dropped in. Nice and warm. Look out the window at that My storm. My will be suspicious. Gosh, your lips look My delicious. My brother will be there at the door. Waves upon the tropical My shore. My maiden aunt's mind Gosh, your lips vicious. are delicious. Well, maybe just the Never such a blizzard I've before. I've got to get but home. But baby, you freeze out there. Say, lend me a call. It's up to your knees out there. You've really been I grand. thrill when you touch my but hand. don't you see? How can you do this thing There's to me? There's bound to be talk tomorrow. Think of my lifelong sorrow. At least sorrow. there will be plenty implied. If you caught no more, you I must really I can't stand. Get over that old out, oh, baby. But it's, it's cold. cold. These people sing in the darndest places. Phil, <laughs> let's go home. Oh, he can't go home yet. He has to get that two hundred dollars back from Grogan so he can buy your Mother's Day present. Frankie's right. Yeah. I'd rather forget the present. No, no. We won't have any trouble getting the money back. Come on, Curly. Grogan belongs to a very exclusive club. We'll find him there. Okay, look, Alice, you go home, and I'll call you right after I get my money back, but huh? But, Phil, please don't... I get... want my money back. Hey, Frankie. Hmm? This is a swanky club. Are you sure Grogan belongs to this? Oh, yeah. He's a charter member. He must be around someplace. Ah, oh, there he is. Hey, Grogan. Grogan. A <laughs> number 297341. Is somebody calling <laughs> me? There he is. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, 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 it's you guys. Well, bud, how'd the little woman like the trinket? She didn't see it. I got arrested for having stolen goods. Ah, arrested? <laughs> Remley, I'll thank you to get this ex-con out of here. <laughs> Don't do business with criminals. I'm a criminal. You stole me a hot bracelet. All right, come around tomorrow. I'll send you a fan to cool it off. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Grogan. I want my money back or I'm going to tell the police on you. Oh, you big tattletale. <laughs> That's it. If you want your money back, I'll give it to you. Come on in the dining room. I'll get it for you. Yo, Levin, the winner... Try a six and a half. Everybody, get in the field. Number, number 14, black. Get in the field, everybody. Get in. Come on now. All right, you wait here. I'll get your money. This is a nice big dining room. <laughs> Look at all the tables. Yeah. Wonder why everybody's standing at them tables. Must be Buffett service. <laughs> Well, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. Hey, let's go over to this table. Yeah. Hey, look at it, really. Hmm? Hey, this is a cute tablecloth. Green with numbers on it. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. And look at the nice, big, lazy Susan they got in the middle. <laughs> yeah, but they ain't much food on it. All they got is one little white meatball spinning around. <laughs> Curly. Wow. That's a roulette wheel. 
This is a gambling joint. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is what they look like. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, what a rude awakening. Yeah, and we better get out of here. If we ever got caught in this spot... Ow! Everybody stay where you are. This is a rape. No tonight. Everybody scatter. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, Nothing, Stark. This is our chance to get away from here. Come on. Come on, yeah. Let's beat it. Follow me and don't lose your head, Remley. I'll get you out of this. Oh, I hope you can. I've never been so frightened in all my life. And control yourself, will you, Frankie? Every time you get excited, your voice goes up to... <laughs> Me, it's a dame. Oh, that's all we need. Oh, please, please help me get okay, out. Okay, lady, okay, lady, okay, calm down. Just come right with us, right through this door. There, there. Well, thank goodness we made it. Nobody's here but the three of us. And little me. <laughs> get your hands up. Hey, look, it's Blue Boy again. <laughs> Homer handcuff. <laughs> oh. Oh, so it's you two, huh? You guys get around, don't you? You ain't exactly a stay-at-home yourself. <laughs> now, officer, this time it's a mistake. You hear me? I'm... Yeah, it always is. Hey, uh, Murph, can I get these people's names from my paper? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Oh, no, a reporter. Now, look, Remley, whatever you do, don't give your right name. Tell him you're somebody else. Mm. I'm Larkin of the Mirror. What's your name, bud? My name? Um, um... Julius Abrosio, Mac. And what's your name, mister? Phil Harris. <laughs> Frankie, what did you give my name for? You took the one I was going to use. <laughs> Yours is the only other one I could think of. You're Phil Harris, huh? And who are you, Blondie? Are you with him? Yes, yes, I, I'm his wife. Alice Faye? No, no, look. Oh, wait, now, wait a minute, Story hits the street. Faye and Harris wait a minute, gambling bud. raid. I'll have this on the stands in an hour. Now, wait a minute. Come back here. That's not Alice, and I'm not me. I'll... All right, all right. Get moving, all of you. If we hurry, you can get your old cell back. Oh, no. Gee, story in the papers is horrible. Miss Faye in jail, caught in a gambling raid. I'd never have thunk it of her. I guess you can't tell a book by its cover. And such a beautiful cover. <laughs> what a binding. <laughs> I wonder who's here at the house taking care of the kids while she's incarcerated. Oh, hello, Julia. Miss Faye, you has been sprung. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you shoot your way out? What on earth are you talking about? You're supposed to be in jail. It says here in the paper that Phil Harris and Alice Faye was arrested in a gambling raid. A gambling raid? Oh, Julius, I... You don't have to explain, Somi. I don't care about your sordid past. <laughs> I know your husband drug you into this. Now, Julius, listen to me. Let you... me take you away from that Fagan and his criminal existence. <laughs> Julius, please, Mr. Harris is in jail. What'll I do? Leave him there! <laughs> Dream girl. Let's fly away to Hawaii. Julius, blue Hawaii. <laughs> Where the hookah, hookah, nookah, nookah, snookah, snookahs go swimming by. <laughs> oh, stop it. I have to go down and get him out. Oh, I'd love to teach him a lesson. Then take me with you. I'm the best little teacher you can get. <laughs> Miss Harris, I'm sorry you had to come down to the station house again. Oh, Alice, thank goodness you showed up. I've been trying to tell that sergeant that I'm innocent and I want to get out of here. If I'm... you show it on baby face, the gang's mouthpiece will have you out in no time. <laughs> Alice. What gang? Don't tell me you never heard of the Harris band. He's the leader of the toughest mob this side of Chicago. He's public enemy number one. But I, I, I... Oh, so you're the leader of a band of bad men, eh? Well, it's not their fault. They just happen to be lousy musicians. <laughs> 
Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. You tell me, son. Is this Phil Harris the radio comedian, or is he public enemy number one? Yes. <laughs> Why, you little... Stand back. Mrs. Harris, is this man your husband? Is he a crook? Is he a band leader? Or is he nuts? Yes. <laughs> I mean, no. Sergeant, this man is my husband. He's not guilty of any crime, and if you'll release him in my custody, I'll be responsible for Okay, him. but this time, keep him out of trouble. Get out of here, Harris. And turnkey, throw that Remley character out, too. Come along, Phil. And this time, we're going right home. No, we're not. We are not going home. I'm just sore enough. We're not going till I get that money back from Grogan so I can buy you a Mother's Day present. Phil, please, stay away from I'm that man. I'm not going to stay away please. from that man. He owes me that money, and this time I'm going to his house. Now, I'm not going to get in any trouble there. Remley knows where he lives. Now, go home, and I'll call you as soon as I get my $200 back. <laughs> Hello, Alice, it's me. Oh, thank goodness. Did you get the 200 from Grogan? Yeah, I got it, and I went downtown and bought your Mother's Day present with it. Oh, Phil, I can't wait to see it. When will you be home? Just a minute. Hey, Sarge, how long do you think I'll be here? <laughs> Phil, you're in jail again? Yes, dear. What for now? Passing counterfeit money. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Recently, a customer asked me for an example of Rexall quality that she could see with her own eyes. I told her one example like that is the label on a Rexall drug product, and she came back with... But every drug product has a label. Yes, ma'am, that's true, but let's take a look at this Rexall label for a minute. See these three different sets of numbers? One here in this corner, one over here, and one up here? Yes. Now, you've probably never noticed them before, but... Each one means that certain important steps in the preparation of this product have been carefully done and thoroughly checked. For instance, this one here is the product's code number and tells the tested formula by which it was compounded. This one here is the control number which was assigned to the complete case history that has been kept on this product through every step of its manuf manufacture. And um, this one here? That's the identification of the label itself. And it means that the label has been carefully checked for the proper directions and is the right one for this particular product. And I've always looked on a label as just a piece of paper with the name of the product. Well, ma'am, those pieces of paper are handled like currency in a bank. They're kept in a locked room until the labeling process begins. Then a certain amount is counted out very carefully, and after the labeling run, every one of them is again counted and checked against the number of bottles or packages labeled. Naturally, the two have to balance well, that is evidence I can see for myself. Yes, ma'am. Evidence of the painstaking care and accuracy that go into the preparation of all of the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. When you remember things like this, you understand why some 10,000 independent Rexall druggists tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Alice, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't get you anything for Mother's Day. I didn't get my money back from Grogan and... Oh, that's all right, Phil. You don't have to get me anything. But I want to. Well, if you insist, okay. But don't spend too much money. Get me something inexpensive. Like what? Well, I... I could use something to get around town in. How about a Cadillac convertible, darling? Or would you rather buy me a Lincoln Continental, sweetheart? Take roller skates and call me stinky. <laughs> This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.